just for a moment. We're going to do something different today. I want to welcome all those watching online. Uh, my friends in Africa, they were on a safari this morning, watching us on a safari and sent me pictures of a lion and all that. So welcome those watching in Africa, <laughs> in Europe. So glad to have you. We're going to pray for our kids today as they're coming up right now. Come on, give our kids a hand. They're awesome. And let's give, let's give all the city kids, volunteers a big hand. They're awesome. Come on down, come on down, come on down. And so right now, we're almost a weekend to our 21 days of prayer. And uh, we're praying as a church. One of the themes we're praying for is our schools. And of course, that's our kids. And, um, and this is important, right? Kids are important to God and to us. So let's stretch our hands toward them, if you would, at this time. They're coming in. We've got a lot of kids. Come on. We, come on down. Pay attention, son, and go down. I'm glad you're bowing your head, but let's keep going. <laughs> Amen. So, Father, we thank you, Jesus, for every child. We're so honored to have them in our church and their families. And we ask that this is the best year of school they've ever had. Lord, let their minds be alert. Let them learn and comprehend and grow. Lord, we ask for just the Holy Spirit to be upon each child. They are protected in any way, in every way, from anything that would hurt them. Lord, touch our teachers, our principals, our administrations of, of public and private schools. We ask that they would be sheltered in the presence of God and that they would be used by you even now as children. Let them be raised up as voices and let your presence reside with them every day on the way to school, while they're at school, on the way home. Lord, bless them and use them. We ask to bless all the daycares, preschools, elementary schools, junior high schools, high schools, Indiana University, Ivy Tech. Let this be the best year in our city in the education sector. And let your glory be seen, felt, and heard. In Jesus' name, everyone said? Amen. Amen. Come on, give them a big hand. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. That's it. They are orderly and doing a great job. That's good. Cool stuff. You may be seated. Thank you so much. We'll give them time to get out. Go back to class. <laughs> How many love kids? Amen. This is our first weekend of our series, uh, Recess, and got a lot going on, and uh, I want to encourage you to be praying with us. We're believing that God is moving, and man, it's amazing. Um, already this weekend, 10 people have received Jesus already in the two worship experiences, and we're living, I want to you know, encourage you on something. We're living in a move of God right now. And we, we value that. We don't say that pridefully. We're humbled at that. And we want Jesus to move more and more. And so uh, this series is to encourage you and to strengthen you and to challenge you in a huge area of our life. I don't know if you're like me, but I think recess is the best part of school, period, hands down. Can I get a witness 1030? Are you like me? It's the best part. I think that they should have recess for adults in their work day. Just, just a half in the middle of the day. Just go have recess. Would that be amazing? God. And uh, it's good times. <laughs> it's good times of memories. I th you know, I think back, I had distinct memories of recess and great opportunities and, you know, fun times with friends and whatnot. And, but really, some of us have, have had good times and some of us have had bad times in school for whatever reason. But no matter what, uh, recess, I believe, speaks to our adult life. It speaks to our relationships. And if we're honest, the ongoing challenge of relationships. Amen. And I believe, I titled it Recess because I believe if you and I will embrace this idea of God, then you and I can enjoy life, enjoy others, because we're embracing the plan of God through relationships in our life. And this is why I've titled this message Organic Company. So if you want to turn your Bibles to Matthew 22 or just follow me on the screen, whatever's best for you. Uh, I've preached on this tons of times and I probably will again tons of times because I believe these verses are so powerful. Jesus is answering a religious person who's trying to trap him and, and trick him in saying the wrong answer. 
and what's the greatest commandment. In other words, you know, what's the greatest rule and all these check boxes these guys were doing. And Jesus just blows their mind and sums it up in two commandments. I want you to think about this today. All of the Bible, if you're a Bible person like me, from Genesis to Revelation, everything in the Bible is summed up in two things. We call it around here simply love God. Everyone say love God. Love people. And how many know that is very difficult at times? And so it's simple, but it's challenging. And so notice what Jesus said in verse 37. He's responding to this gentleman. He says, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor. I want to say love your neighbor. Notice what he says, though, as yourself. So, Father, I thank you today for this first weekend of August. We thank you for school and all the children. Thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for our 21 days of prayer. As you're moving with us in our prayers, we're believing you. We're hoping in you. And bless this message in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. In verse 37, I believe that Jesus is really speaking to a powerful truth that you and I have to process on an ongoing basis through our life, and that is the idea of first love. In Revelation, Jesus spoke to John the Apostle about one of the churches. He spoke about seven churches, and one of the churches, Jesus said that they left their first love. You know, first love is a powerful thing. We love to watch movies of a great love story. Some of you read novels of a great love story. Last week, my uncle went home to be with Jesus, my mom's brother, And as I went to visit my aunt and sit down and talk to her, I didn't realize that they met as children in our old building when they were, I mean, this is a long time ago, and they started dating as young teenagers and were married for 58 years. We love stories like that. (laughs) Uh, Wow, amen. I mean, (laughs) Aunt Nancy, they love you. This is amazing. Uh, She's watching. Um, But but, but we love stories like that. We, We love fidelity, longevity. We love that idea, in, and I hope every one of us can experience that at some level. But really, Jesus is asking us in verse 37 to give him our first love. Now, the word organic means in our mind, healthy, natural, good. We want to do it, and, and we want to have it. And so obviously we think of food and nutrition, but this is an organic company. One of the definitions of the word organic means a relationship a relationship, excuse me, between elements that fit together harmoniously as necessary parts of a whole. Now, just as my aunt and uncle met at five years of age and then dated around 14, 15, and and then were married for 58 years, Jesus wants our first love to be with him. That doesn't mean we can't love our spouse, because we should, or our kids, or even hobbies and careers. It's just he wants our love for him to be first. And he's asking uh, 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 us in this verse to love him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. This does not happen when you and I receive Jesus. This happens in the process of our relationship, walking it out day by day, year by year. This is why I love knowledge. I love Bible stuff. I love the original language. I love it. I study it. But in reality, sometimes we make it harder than what it is. And it's really summed up today is knowledge is wonderful. I encourage you all to learn and we'll help you learn. But we cannot ever replace knowledge for practicing our faith. We have to practice our faith. And we practice our faith the first way here today is by giving God and loving him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. This simply is broken down. Our heart deals with our emotion, our inward feelings, our inward desire. There's more in you and I than just our organs. There's our spirit. There is our heart. There's our soul. And our heart is a massive computer that remembers good and bad. We harbor good feelings and bad feelings in our heart. Jesus wants us to love him with all of our heart. But then Jesus goes deeper. I call it the crazy part of every human being. That's called the soul. Because how many know our soul is comprised of our mind, and our mind is crazy every day? Thank you for a little bit of honesty. We need Jesus. Our will, a lot of times, with God, we want it to be with God. But if we're honest, a lot of times our will is obstinate against God. And our emotions fluctuate up and down multiple times in one day. Maybe in one conversation. 
Maybe in one moment. And we need Jesus to touch our soul. So he's asking us to love him with all of our heart, all of our soul. And then he says mind, which deals with our thought life, our imaginations. Every thought has a picture. And he's asking us to love him in our mind. Jesus is wanting us to take this next step. Thank you for giving financially, and that's a great thing because God will bless what we give, and he will show us his faithfulness, and it's wonderful. It's how the church works. It's how he's, he's ordained this. However, the greatest thing we could ever give to God is our first love, our heart, our soul, and our mind. And I ask you today, who has your first love? Does God have your first love today? Are you loving him with all your heart? This does not have to do with perfection. This has to do with a posture and a position of saying, God, I give you everything I have. And that's a challenge, but he's asking us today to do it. Love him with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Who has your first love? But Jesus didn't stop there. That's the first one. Then he goes to the second one. And so he's asking us to transition this first love into organic company that does two things. Love ourselves and love others. In verse 39, he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Now again, organic is natural. It's healthy. It's good. We want to eat those things. It, it is better for us as we've been taught and as uh, they've done studies on this. And we think of relationships, we want organic relationships. We want natural relationships. We want to harmoniously flow with the people that we like. But notice who Jesus said our, our organic company is. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. You and I would like to think that we control who comes in our life and who exits. But in reality, we don't. Because, for example, just a few things here, just stay with me. You and I did not control who is in this room with us. We just came in this room and who was here is who's here. If you're in college or you were and you had a dorm roommate, you didn't get to choose your roommate. You met your roommate when you got to the room. That was awesome. <laughs> when you move into a neighborhood, you can't tell your neighborhood association, I want all these people to move out. I want my friends to move in so I control who my neighbors are. No, who is your neighbor is who is your neighbor. When we have classes and we go to school or, or in any setting, we can't tell the teacher, I want this person out, this person out, and I want all my buddies to be in class. No, who is your classmates is who is your classmates. Notice most of the time, even on our jobs, you can't tell your boss, I want all these people out, we would like to maybe, uh, and I want all these people in. No, who we work with is who we work with. We don't control any of that. And this is who Jesus is speaking to. This is who our neighbors are. Notice most of the time, ladies and gentlemen, our company is forced. And we, at times, want to say, I want who I want to be with. I just want to flow with them. And Jesus is saying, no, I want you to love the neighbor I am bringing into your life. You see, listen to this statement. This is true because you and I, up to our own humanity, would choose people that we approve of. But God wants us to love our neighbor that he approves of in our life, making us more like him. Here is great revelation. This is deep. I'm going to tell you, this is deep. I didn't marry Summer to change Summer. I married Summer because I love her, but in that marrying her, I am being changed. It's not my job to change her. I am being changed in my relationship with her. A lot of times we see people as projects, and we want to preach to people, and we want to tell them the word of God, and we have the truth, and we know what should be done, and I'm over you. And really, really, come on now, relationships organically are to show us how much more we need need Jesus because all of us are jacked up so that we can get closer to Jesus so that more of Jesus comes through us and touches them. Jesus never said to change people. He never said to berate people. He never said to ostracize them. He said to, to love him and love them. And so notice, when you and I embrace this organic company, our organic company, folks, is the people that God brings in our life. 
And, he, and when we do this, we're changed, we're made better, and we have a fulfilled life. Here at City Church, you have a great opportunity. You can be with people that are totally different than you, different ethnicities. They vote different. They think different. If they've had a church background, totally a church background, and we love that here because you can see people and meet people here in this worship experiences. You can go to a life group. You can be on a team. You can go to events, and you can be with people. This is healthy. Our, our human tendency is us for and no more. Be with people that think like me vote like me, believe like me, or in my same group, we're Pentecostal, we're Baptist, we're Methodist, and all those groups are great. I love it because all those groups are here right now in this room, and it's wonderful, and we love you, but it's not about groups. It's not about groups, and our human tendency is to, like, get barriers, and we only let people come that we approve of, and God's saying, when did I ever tell you to judge people based on what you approve of? I want you to love people based on who I approve because that is how we are changed, and that's how we practice our faith. Drop the mic, boom, we're dismissed. All right, let's go eat. All right. Proverbs 18, 24 says, a man has friends who has friends must show himself friendly. So here's what happens. You and I, when you and I understand the love order of Jesus, this becomes a little bit easier. We are to take our first love and give it to him, transition it into loving ourselves and others for an organic company that whoever God brings in our life, this is who we choose to love. Now, here is the love order of God. Are you with me? This is the love order. Our first love is to be with Jesus. This is so hard for, I think, our generation. This is so hard and younger because we have, like, five TVs in, like, one room of our house. Then we have two cell phones and three iPads and a five-foot square radius, microwave dinners, and it's just like we're just going, looking all the time. We're always going. I'm trying to really not look down as much as my phone. It's just it's crazy. I got a vein that's popped out of my hand because I'm scrolling on my phone too much. It's like, it's like a devil in my hand. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I have a tendon that's popped out. It's crazy. And there's the, God wants you and I to have order. And so our challenge more than ever is God first. Spouse, kids, money, career. And, and church is involved in that. And our challenge is wife, husband, kids. Listen, folks, this may challenge you. Our wife, our husband, our kids should not dictate the direction of our home. Our love for God should dictate the direction of our home. And then our, our marriage will be better. It won't be perfect, but our marriage will be better if we love God greater than we love our spouse. And our parenting will be better if we love God more than we love our kids. Well, I, just, I don't believe it. Notice what the Bible says. Jesus said it. Red letters. All right? So love him first. Our first love, heart, soul, and mind, is to love Jesus. Now, it may not happen in a day. It may not solve all the problems. But I promise you, our life will have order and blessing when he is number one. And there will be stuff that comes our way. But when our love for God is first, our marriage will be blessed, our parenting will be blessed, our community at church will be blessed, our careers will be blessed, and we will have ups and downs. But the unnecessary drama that happens when that's not in order, because if it's not in order, folks, it may not show up now, but down the road, you and I are going to hit the fan, and it will be a chaotic mess. And if you're in that place today, I want to encourage you to come back in order, Put God first and begin to love. And children will remind you, man, I teach my kids to love Jesus. We pray every day. I tell my boys, how do you treat girls? Protect and respect. You know, all this stuff. And so recently, I'm running solo. My wife's in Las Vegas seeing her family. I got, it's just me and the boys, man. This is crazy. It's just me and the boys. And uh, I was having a meeting, and I was like, I need you to watch a movie and just be quiet. So I put in this Polar Express movie, and I'm trying to have them just watch it. And I said, guys, watch Santa Claus. And David said, Dad, you told me he's not even real. I'm like, you know what? I want you to be quiet. Jesus is real. Sin is real for right now. Just watch the movie and shut up. That's why I watch it. Okay? <laughs> they challenge you, man. They put you there. When you raise them right, they'll, they'll call you out. One time we get somewhere and I got in a big fight in the van. And after we, got in, and after we were done, David in the back goes, Dad? I said, what, son? It's kind of takes off. Said, 
are you going to tell the church about your argument? I'm like, you know what? Get out of the car. You're walking home. <laughs> All right. Let's get back in the spirit here. <clears throat> I need Summer to come home. First love. We love him with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Notice, though, the second thing in the order of God is we love ourselves. You see, Jesus said we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. This is the part, ladies and gentlemen, where we overcome shame, guilt, and low self-esteem. This is where we overcome fear, racism, pride, insecurity, self-worth issues. This is where we overcome our past, our pain, and our problems. You see, when you and I love others, or excuse me, when we love ourselves, we can truly begin to love others. You see, anyone who's a racist who thinks that pigmentation makes someone lower than them is really a reflection, a, a reflection that they don't love themselves right. Any person that beats a kid or beats a woman is just showing you they don't love themselves. Any person that objectifies a man or a woman through unlicit sexual appetite and people that are involved in sex trafficking, all that is is revealing they don't love themselves. Lust is an issue. Overpowering lust is an issue of not loving ourselves correctly. Not treating our spouse the way God asks us to. Not love. All of this, if we ever have a problem with loving our neighbor... It really boils down to we have a hiccup with loving ourselves, Because, folks, when I realize how much God has loved me and how much he's forgiven me, how can I not love my fellow man? How can I not? Why would I ever be racist? Why would I ever be sexist? Why would I ever be you know, prideful and think that my house that's bigger is better than your house and I'm better than you? That's, a, that's insane. All that, or I'm more educated and I dress better and, I'm, I'm, I'm more handsome or we're a health, you know, all of that is human depravity that's reflecting an issue with ourselves. Because if we love ourselves from God's love, we will see others equally and we will love them. The third one is we love others. We see them through how Jesus sees them. So in closing, I want to ask you, where's your first love, and, and will you take this next step? Will you take this next step and move forward in Jesus? This is how, folks, we practice our faith. This is how we seize the moment and live in opportunity right now. It's really loving God and loving people. It, it, it truly is giving ourselves our first love to him. And then we see our neighbor, not picky, choosy, and you're in, you're out, and us four no more. Isn't it crazy like recess back in the day we had groups and we played with our friends and other people were excluded. We do that as adults. Us four and no more. Our group, we're better. We know more. No, 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 no. We love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We love the people that God brings into our life. This is the practicality of Jesus, folks. This is where Jesus takes root in our lives. So I ask you today, will you take your next step? Will you take your next step? Will you take your next step? Here, I have in my notes. Will you take your next step, and will you embrace your neighbor today? Will you embrace your neighbor and see them through the eyes of God? Maybe your next step is to join a life group. Maybe that freaks you out. And I want to encourage you to take that step and get to know people. We're so isolated in our country right now. We hardly ever talk to our neighbors. We just drive in the driveway and shut the garage door and windows shut, blinds shut, don't talk. I mean, there's a comedian that has a great, uh, a great uh, act about 20 years ago and people came to the, you know, the house unexpected. Remember that? People just come to your house, not call you or text you. That was non-existent. They just showed up, knocked on the door. Hey, we're here. Everyone was excited. Had some pastries. Oh, we got company. Come on in. Everyone's happy and excited. Nowadays, you get a knock on the door. Who is it? <laughs> Everyone, shut up. Don't let them know we're in here. They're just banging on the door. I hear you. You're not hearing me. It's not me. Who invited who over? You didn't text me, Facebook, tweet me. Who? Why are you here? It's true. 
I mean, I lived in a parsonage, folks, when I was a kid. People came over to our house because we were the pastors. Help me. My mom would have coffee. I'd come out in my underwear as a kid. People around the table having coffee. It was just a big old family. It was weird. I mean, nowadays, I mean, nowadays, shoot, if someone sees the inside of our house, like they saw the vault of heaven, it's like, ha ah! <laughs> Will you join a life group? <laughs> and let us in your home. Come on up. <laughs> Everyone's like, I'm not doing that. Yes, you are. <laughs> Will, 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 some of us, will you attend Build? Maybe it's something totally different than that. But I shamelessly ask you those things because I know that community is a powerful thing. And when you and I take our next step, we're breaking the culture right now in America of isolation. We're breaking the culture that shuts down and isolates and it's just us and we just live life on just social media. And, and no, 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 we're branching, we're branching out. We love our neighbor. We love the people that God has brought to us. And this is how we get changed by God's power and love. This is it. He uses relationships to change us. Will you take those steps? I believe Jesus has amazing things for us. And if you and I will embrace it, the best will be revealed through being connected with others. The challenges of that, the piercings of that, the rubbing the wrong way, the, the, all that is, is all God making us more like him. If you believe in this Jesus, give him a great hand clap of praise. He's a worthy God. He's a great Christ. He's a great Christ. He's good. We need him. We want him. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to worship. Here's what we do. We have a, this thing called response to God. So if you just kind of hang with me here. Josh is going to lead us in Laura with a great worship song. Someone wrote this song. They felt like God was speaking this to them, and so they wrote it from that angle. And it was, come away with me. It's one line. And then... And then it, open up your heart and let me in. Will, we, will you and I open up our heart and let God in today? And let him take these next steps by loving God and loving people and, and embracing the plan that God has through others. As they sing, sing it with them. The birds are on the screen, and then I'll come back in just a couple of minutes. Let's worship. Come away with me. Come away.
to God today. To help us to love our neighbor, not picking and choosing who that is, but we love who you bring to us, who we sit next to, who we do life with in a life group, who we do church with, who we work with, who we live next to. Help us to reach out beyond our world and reach into the world of someone else. Help us be the light of Jesus for your name, for your name's sake, in Jesus' name. If you don't mind bowing your head right now, you online can respond as you feel led where you're watching. And you would say today, PD, I've never received Jesus. This is asking the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Son of Heaven to come into your life. And He lives in us by the Holy Spirit. And he, He's there with us every day. The Bible says to never leave us nor forsake us. When we mess up, He doesn't leave us. He doesn't reject us. He stays there and heals us through our mistakes. And we go forward in God. And you would say today, PD, I've never done that in my life. Or you would say, I have done that, but I don't have peace with God. I'm not living where I, I need to, and I want that to change today. If that's you in this moment, raise your hand right now, and I'm going to pray for you to receive Jesus today. God bless you. God bless you. Someone's receiving Jesus today. God bless you. Someone's receiving Jesus today. God bless you. Someone's, I love it. Someone's receiving Jesus today. I love five people coming to Jesus today. Love it. Keep your head back a little bit longer. And I try to lead this church, and I'll try, I lead it to the best of my ability in humility. This message is for me, and I want Jesus to help me do what I'm preaching today. And you would say, PD, I want God's help to love him, the first love. I want to first love him. I want to love him with my first. I want to love myself right. And I want to love others right. And I want to have Jesus come through me by loving God, loving people. Whoever is my neighbor, that's who I love. If that's you today and you want that support, raise your hand right now. I want to pray for you in this room. God bless you. Hands up everywhere. Thank you for responding. Follow me out loud so no one's left out. Please say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours. Come into my life. Please forgive me for anything that's wrong in any way. I turn from it and I run to you. Help me by the Holy Spirit change my life. And I choose through your spirit to love you, to love myself, and to love others, to fulfill your heart in my life for your glory. I am yours in Jesus' name. If you believe you heard it today, give him one more hand clap of praise. He's worthy today. He's moving on our behalf, moving on our behalf. Amen. I'm going to ask the prayer team to join me right now at the altar. So here's what we do. We let you respond to God as you feel led from what you heard today. So here in a moment, uh, Josh is going to lead us in this worship song again. And if you raised your hand to receive Jesus, I want to encourage you to come down and get this Bible. I preach from this every weekend. I love it. It will help you grow in your faith and know what you believe. So come down and receive it. If you raise your hand to respond to the message, come down and we'll pray with you. We'll support you. If you want to take communion, you can do it on your own. It's in the back of the room and in the front on either side of the stage. If you want to sit in your seat and just worship that way, you can. I just want to encourage you to take a step and respond to God. Now, one thing that's a little different today, if you feel compelled to join a life group, if not, take it home and read it and pray about it. But if you do, if you haven't done this yet, you can fill out the card, tear it off, and at each communion table, there's a basket you can drop this life group card in, and we'll take it and assimilate that and help you get connected. And if you want the prayer card of the, of the 21 days of prayer, that's at the communion tables too. So you can do that as well today if, that's, if that suits you. If you want prayer, come down the middle aisle. If you want communion, walk back or come down the side aisles. 
And I believe you're going to be touched by God. And then Josh will dismiss us here in just a few moments. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord be good to you. May he look upon you. May he come close to you. May he be gracious to you. May he give you his peace. And for today's message, may he give you and I the courage to have organic company, to love him and love people. In Jesus' name, let's respond to God.